Welcome to the second of four instructional videos that will cover various math topics relevant to chemical engineering. This video will continue with vector tensor operations, including calculus operations involving the del operator. So continuing directly from the last video's example of a dot product between two vectors, we should note that you can do the same with a vector and a tensor. So you can do the same with a t vector and a tensor. Right, so say we have an arbitrary vector, let's make that 2e x hat plus 5e y hat, and well, let's dot that with a tensor. Let's make the tensor 3e x hat e x hat minus 4e x hat e z hat. So note that this could also be written like so, 2, 5, 0, uh, dot, 3, 0, minus 4, and then the rest are zeros. And although this second way, uh, you can do the math with this second way, I personally find it easier in terms of explanation to work with the former setup so that uh, you can see how the process of taking the dot product is identical to when we dotted two vectors earlier. So let's Let's do that. We'll distribute as we would normally, and since here we'll end up with four terms, I'll write all of the four terms out just to see the process. So four terms. And so the result will then look something like, see, two times three, ex hat dotted with two directions, ex hat, ex hat, our second term will be 2 times minus 4 ex hat dotted with ex hat ez hat. Our third term will be 5 times 3 ey hat dot ex hat ex hat. And finally, our fourth term will be 5 times minus 4. Um, and our directions will be e y hat dotted with e x hat and e z hat. So what we do now is we will dot the two unit vectors adjacent to the dot symbol. So here, 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 and here. And then essentially we know from our definitions that the orthogonal unit vectors will go to zero. So this third and fourth term will be zero. However, the first and second term, ex hat dot ex hat, that's one. So, um, and however, note that we still have a remaining unit vector that has not been operated on. So that will remain in our final answer, right? So we'll write this first term then as six times e x hat. Our second term similarly will be eight times easy hat. Again, because uh, two times minus four and then easy hat, which has not been operated on by the dot. Right, so this is our final answer. And we should note that essentially, since a tensor has two directionalities, right, the result of a dot product between a vector and a tensor would be a vector with one remaining degree of directionality, the other having been quote unquote dotted away. Also note that if we had done tensor dot vector instead of vector dot tensor, the two unit vectors adjacent to the dot symbol would have been different and the result therefore would also be different. You can try it yourself to verify this. In short, order matters here. In fact, since tensors have two directionalities, you can do two dot products. Uh, something called a double dot product so in order to remove both directions so let's just say we have a tensor with just one term ex hat ey hat and we double dot that with another tensor with just one term for simplicity's sake ey hat dot ex hat so the first step is to perform a dot operation between the adjacent unit vectors in this case that's just one which leaves ex hat with just one dot operation remaining. 
between the two and that's just one so therefore the answer then is just one for this very simple example so essentially here the result of a double dot product between two tensors is just a scalar as we have remain or as we have removed uh, both degrees of directionality it shouldn't be a surprise that vector and tensor calculus shows up in courses like fluids and heat and mass transfer Typically, a scalar or vector changes depending on where you are in space and in time. In other words, they are functions, and so we can take derivatives as we do any other function. Recall three main operations, which are essentially just vector operations themselves and are therefore treated as such. These are the gradient, divergence, and curl, all of which utilize the del operator. The del operator is a vector in which each component, uh, so it's, this is what it looks like, and it's called a del operator, and essentially what it is, it's a vector, but it's essentially each component is uh, the partial derivative of some unspecified function with respect to the direction of that unit vector, so d, d, z, e, z, hat. And we can use this in uh, a few key ways, right? So we'll review some um, operations that use this del operator, including the gradient, the divergence, and we'll briefly just review the curl. The first way is by multiplying this a uh, del operator with some scalar function f. So um, essentially the scalar function f is, uh, it may be a function of x, y, um, and or z. So it's a scalar f as a function of x, y, or z. And however, it's a scalar, so it has no direction associated with it, just some ordinary function. So for example, temperature would uh, be an example of a scalar function because temperature can vary with space, but it has no direction, right? So um, what I'll do is I'll write out um, the del operator as I did before, and we'll see how we can essentially Sorry, no dot product, just a direct multiplication, right? So we're going to directly multiply this f, and then essentially we're going to distribute it into um, each term. And what we'll see as a result is that the answer will be the partial derivative of f with respect to x, ex hat plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y, ey hat, plus the partial derivative of f with respect to z, e z hat. Right, so note that this is a vector. So the result is a vector as we just directly multiplied the scalar function into the del operator. And this result is called the gradient of f. The second way is by dotting the del operator with some vector function v. So we're going to dot it with some v, and this vector function will again be a function of x, y, and or z. And that means that just means that each component of the vector v, x, v, y, and v, z are all functions of x, y, and or z. x, y, z. And an example of this is uh, velocity. So velocity has its associated speed, and it also has a direction. And these speeds and directions can uh, be different based on where you are in space, right? It can vary with position, such as in such as the velocity of a fluid inside a pipe, for example. So what I'll do is I'll write out the del operator again to demonstrate how we will perform the dot product d d y plus d d x easy hat 
Right, we're going to dot that, and I'm going to write out each component of the arbitrary vector plus vz ez hat. All right, and what we're going to do is just utilize the definition of the dot product as we have before, and we'll see that the result is therefore the derivative of vx with respect to x plus the derivative of vy with respect to y plus the derivative of vz with respect to z. So notice that um, the answer is a scalar function because the dot product removed the directionality so the result is not a vector and so this scalar is called the divergence of v. The third way is we can perform a cross product of the del operator with some vector function v. Um, so although we won't discuss the cross product in detail, essentially if we uh, define the cross product in a certain way, we use that definition to uh, perform this uh, cross product between the del operator and a vector function. And what we'll see is that the basic operations hold and the result is a vector function and this is called the curl of v. We can even take the gradient of a vector function, so del v. So note that here we are not doing a dot product, it's a direct multiplication. So I'll write out the del operator one more time just to show the process. And then we're going to not take a dot product Easy hat. Instead, we're going to directly multiply this with a velocity, or not a velocity, just a, some arbitrary vector function. And by directly multiplying, you know, it may seem weird at first, but what you will see is that once you distribute, right, once you directly multiply, once you distribute, the result is. Let's see what happens. So not a dot product. Our first term will be the partial derivative of vx with respect to x, ex hat, ex hat, because we have not uh, done anything to remove the, this directionality, right? So we're going to maintain both unit vectors. So the next term then will be, uh, see, the derivative of vy with respect to x, ex hat, ey hat. I'll write out maybe one more, the derivative of vz with respect to x, ex hat, ez hat. And since we have distributed, we'll note that there's going to be a total of nine terms, and then our last term then will be the derivative of vz with respect to z, ez hat, ez hat. So what you'll see is that our result is a tensor with nine components in total. And so let's see, our result is a tensor with nine terms in total. Tensor and um, you know because the directionality of both vectors has been maintained, that's why it's a tensor, and this is called the gradient of v. So before we took the gradient of a scalar function, now we're taking a gradient of a vector function, and that's why we have a tensor as our result. Finally, if we dot a del operator with another del operator, though I will not expand and show the details, you know, you can f feel free to verify on your own, we get something called a Laplacian or del squared. So this is a Laplacian operator and it looks like, it looks something like this. So it'll look like the second 
there is sorry, the sum of the second derivatives of some unspecified function with respect to x, y, and z. Note that this is a scalar operator since the dot product removed the directionality of both the del vectors. As you can see, there are many permutations of problems that can be asked using a few simple operations. Just remember that while it might seem tedious at times, at the core these mathematical operations are defined precisely and systematically. This is why if you become stuck on a complex problem using these mathematical operations, take out some scratch paper on the side, create a simpler situation that uses similar math, and use that to help refresh yourself on how to deal with these operations. This ends the second of four instructional videos that cover various math topics relevant to chemical engineering courses. In the next video, we will cover simple ordinary differential equations and various boundary conditions with applications to fluid mechanics and heat and mass transfer.